how you create the slider. Now the question comes, how do I get the posts instead of these images, right? So in WordPress, we already have the loop available and we can do a WordPress query called WP query. So I'm going to copy the WP query just to save time. So I'll go over here. I'll go over here and I'll go ahead and paste the WP query. So I'll explain to you what's happening here. So in WordPress, we have the WP query uh, available, class available, which we are instantiating. And then we are passing the arguments inside of it. And argument is an array and it accepts the key value pair. Now you can decide how many posts you want to display. Um, if you were going with how many posts you want to display. If you are going with just standard number of posts that WordPress shows by default, you could have gone for the standard D loop. But if you want to have more control over it, uh, then you can use the WP query and decide what parameters you want to pass. So I'm, I want the five, uh, I want my carousal to have five of the posts. So I'm doing that. You can skip the, you can skip this key value pair, which is post type, uh, because by default it's already post. But the reason I'm putting it over here in case if you want to use it for any custom post type, uh, all you have to do is just change the name of the post type to something else, example news, or maybe uh, testimonials, or whatever your post type slug is. Then we are setting this to false, update post meta cache, and update post term cache, because we don't need that. It's not a we don't need that. And then we just need to loop through. So this is going to give us the loop. So if we check, so this is going to give us the loop. And then what we can do is if we go ahead and print it out, print R, and then if I print the post query and do WP die here, and I also go ahead and do a pre tag for pretty print. And then if I go ahead and refresh, you'll see that you've actually got this WP query object where we've got the query. This is the query that we passed, right? This is the argument that we passed. There are query variables available. Then down at the bottom, you will see the post object. So as you can see, this is the and then you see the post array. So this is the array of the post objects. You can see you've got the ID of the post, the author, date, all of that stuff. Yep. Awesome. Great. Uh, so you've got those five posts available, right? Now, this, this is something you can use. Now you can loop through this. Okay. So what you need to do is you need to do if, so I'm going to put that there. So you need to basically so currently you're repeating these uh, each of these slides thrice and when you are looping through it then the loop will do the job depending on how many posts are there so in this case five it's going to loop for five times so we could use if so we could go ahead and open a php tag because we're going to write php and then we'll say if post query have posts if there are posts available then while post query half post, then you can do this and while and inside of this you can call a function called post query and then the post. Okay. And then inside of this you can paste whatever code you want. Let's say whatever you know you want to loop through. Okay, so you can loop through it as many as, as many times as you want, and you also need to do WP reset post data to reset the loop. Okay, uh, I'm gonna put that over here. You can change this to colon and this to end if it should be fine. Okay, and now if you check what this does is. You can see that after looping through the separate query, this function restores the global post object to the current post in the main query. Okay, so that's why we use the reset post data. All right, and now 
we have certain functions available inside of the loop so I'm gonna use the card which is the bootstrap class say class and then card and then we also need to have the image right so I'm gonna go ahead and paste this code and then I'll explain to you what that means so I don't want to have this image I want to have customized image okay so again I will oops, I will go ahead and open PHP tag and inside of this as you can see you have a function in WordPress available called has post thumbnail so this function checks if that particular post has got a featured image or not so you can do has post thumbnail so if there is a post thumbnail otherwise you can show a default image right uh, so maybe I can show this default image like so it's an HTML so I have to close the PHP tag because I have to write HTML right yep so if that particular post has the featured image which means if you go to backend let me get rid of this So if you go to posts and if you edit any of the post, if that post has got a featured image like this one, this has a featured image, then it's going to, then this condition will be true and we are going to go ahead and show the featured image. Otherwise, we are going to just show the default image like so. Okay. So, so in WordPress, we have a function available called the post thumbnail. So we're just going to use that. So I'm going to just copy this and paste it and show you what's happening here so I'll paste it here so you can see that this, we are calling this function and this function accepts three parameters first is the ID of the post so inside of the loop you would have already got the function available called get the ID which is going to get you the ID of the post then it, uh, it asks you what is the uh, size you want so this is the featured thumbnail size I want then you can also pass the sizes attribute in, for the image so I'm passing this you can pass the class you can also pass the class over here so I'm doing that so if you check this function in WordPress you can see you can pass the post ID uh, you can pass the size you can pass the additional attributes and those additional attributes can be the class as well so and the sizes so and more so I'm just using the size in the class to override the defaults Okay, so now if you go back and check onto the front end, okay, now you can see that you've got all those images and those are coming from the post itself. And it's not auto looping, so let's start the auto loop. I should actually, should it? Yeah, it's already auto looping, it's just that it's not visible, okay? So it is auto looping, which is great, brilliant. Brilliant. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to get the content of I'm going to get the content. So after this image, so this is the image that we got after this, we want to have div and then I want to have this class called card body. So let's do that. And inside of this, I want to show the heading and the excerpt and stuff like that. Right. So for the heading, we have a function available called the title. And inside the function accepts two parameters. What do you want the prefix to be? Uh, and what do you want the suffix to be for that particular title? So I want this prefix to be H3. I'll just copy it from here to save time. Don't like typing too much here. And suffix will be this H3 ending tag. Okay, so what this is going to do is basically whatever the value of the title is going to insert that between this, uh, you know, before and after. So this is not prefix and suffix. Okay, so we have a function available in WordPress called the title, and then it takes two parameters before and after. So before we can put this HTML, H3, HTML tag H3, and after this we can put the closing h3 tag and then semicolon so what this is going to do is this is going to insert the title of the post between these uh, inside of this tag okay and if you want to see that it's actually happening let's go back let's refresh congratulations you've got the heading and if you inspect element oops 
you can see that this is the image that WordPress is inserted. So we are calling the post thumbnail, right? This one. So it's inserted that it's added this class W100, which means width equals 100. And rest of the attributes are from WordPress, but the size is attribute 350 pixels, 350 pixels, all of that is our custom attribute. So width, height, all of that stuff is coming from WordPress, but uh, you know we have overridden the some of the attributes like uh, class and sizes, etc. But uh, we have our custom attributes also. Okay, and then the URL is the uh, post URL. Okay, now uh, this is your H3. So if you zoom in, you see this inside of this is the card body, right? So this is the card body. Inside of that card body, we am calling the function called the title, and I'm saying that insert the title inside of the H3, uh, opening and closing H3 tag. So H3 and it's inserted this title, post title, which is this one. Uh, so if you go back and check, post, this one, this post right here. Okay, so it's inserted that. And if you check, it's also inserted the featured image for that, right? So this was the featured image, 329. Can you see 329 into 263? Just inserted that, okay, which is great. Next thing we want is the excerpt. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the excerpt. So I'll paste that here. And again, I'm opening and closing PHP tag. You could also do something like this because both are PHP uh, functions. So you could also put them in the same You can put them under the same opening and closing PHP tags. So that's gonna so that's gonna get me the excerpt. Now this is my custom function, but if you were to use it, you could have used the excerpt as well. But I'm just trimming. If I want to trim something, I can do that by passing the number of characters. This is my custom function I have created, but you could very well use the excerpt as well, which is the WordPress function. Okay, so now if you go back and check, if you refresh. You'll notice that there's a P tag and it's added this excerpt over here, which is great. Now, the next thing will be to add the link, which means I want to be able to go to the single page for that particular post, right? So I can do the A tag, so I'll do it here because it's in HTML, and I can say echo and then escape URL. So this is an escaping function in WordPress, and there's a function in WordPress called get the permalink. So this is going to get me the permalink, the URL of to go to the single post and inside of this a tag, again, I'll open the PHP tag and I'm going to say escape HTML E. So this is going to escape the HTML and also echo it out. So you don't have to, you don't have to put echo over here because this E that you see does that job of, you know, echoing it out. So what do I want to echo out? I want to echo out uh, view more and then the text domain which is drive so, and the text domain which is aquila okay so this is used for translation we are using the text domain function so this is going to echo out escape html also translate okay so which is great now go back refresh and now you have a view more button if you click on it it takes you to a single page you can see that this is a single page for that post so all of the content that you see in the editor, which is all of this, is actually showing over here. Which is, yep. Awesome. Congratulations, everyone. So we've just built our uh, carousal. Uh, the last thing we want to do is basically add some styles to it. So like I said, this is not a styles tutorial. So I'm just going to copy the styles and just paste it. So I'll just, I have added some styles. So copy it. I'll copy the styles. I will create a file called slickcarousal.css. So I'll go to SAS, I'll go to generic, create a file called underscore slick dash carousal.css. I'll paste it here. I'll also import the style inside of the main.css. So add import generic 
and slick carousel. Perfect. Refresh. Perfect. Congratulations. You've got some padding. I've got some margin. And so all of that style is coming from here. Okay. Uh, many people, including me, had some issues adding the margin uh, left and right. So the trick to do is that you give it a margin left and right and then you add a negative margin to the slick slider class and that way it will adjust itself. Okay, you'll find this information on Stack Overflow as well. Just thought of giving you the tip. Okay, awesome. My GitHub handle is Imran H. Sayyad. So please do follow me on GitHub and please give star to my repository. Uh, like all the beautiful 118 people have. My repository name is Aquila. And do follow me on Twitter as well. My Twitter handle is QueryTech. So I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.